Gather around and let me tell you the tale of my first ever session of Vampire the Masquerade. I was completely new to the system. Completely new to this group of players. Knew absolutely nothing. This was a few years ago. Playing huddled in the storytellers. Here on referred to as Street. Apartment. This group of players when they invited me to play were all very cheerful and all said oh yeah. It's great vampire is a game of screw your buddy and see if he quits. So you're always backstabbing each other I seemed iffy about joining as at the time I had never played a game where the players were actively not working together. But they kinda. Strongly. Happily insisted I should play. With grins that in hindsight were less friendly and more creepy. A week before this game started. The street had told everyone about the game. The setting is to be Washington DC. History will be important as many of the elders would be historical figures. Everyone would be beginning with a random secret he would be drawing for us the first session. The week before the game. He gives me a list of, not joking, 5 books that he strongly recommended that I read at some point during the length of the campaign to potentially understand what is going on because as a new player, he expected I'd be just sitting in the corner listening while everyone else played. Clearly, that didn't happen. I read all of them and built a character before the first session. I built an Asferita who was a mortician. I gave him the feeding restriction. Cold blood. Floor. To reflect that he was mostly getting his blood from his clients who wouldn't be needing it anymore. Because it's free real estate. My concept that in life he had been going to school to be a doctor but just didn't have the nerve to work on living patients. Eventually someone brought in a cadaver that wasn't quite dead yet and bam. Nosferatu. His highest trays were investigation, autopsy spec, medicine and academics. I come a little before the first session to submit my sheet for approval and the street tells me I've used freebies to buy more than the maximum allowed for an attribute. So I struggled for a second to figure out where to put the dots. Until he suggested I put it in a secondary skill called plague breeding. Which he described as basically pathology with a focus on encouraging the development mutation of diseases. I figured it went with the aspiring doctor concept and took a couple of dots without a thought. The street draws my secret and tells me before we get started, your sire is named Cockrobin. I had no idea what that meant and just shrugged, then sat aside until game started. Now to introduce our cast, names have been changed, obviously, ST. Our street was a prodigy burnout who was convinced he was a genius historian, politician and economist. Most of the time ran game without ever leaving his couch. He was obsessed with social games. Chet. Chet wasn't happy unless he was fighting something, and he was playing the world's most obvious Simis Toreador. Chet didn't like if he wasn't mysterious, in the center of attention, or being backstabby with everyone else. Tom. Tom arrived late, left early, and played a gang role. He had little interest in the game and only showed up for a few sessions but was legitimately always nice when he did play. Sasuk. The street's roommate. A young woman who gave herself her own nickname that was so obviously based on an existing character. Gothi. Always tried to make themselves the biggest badass in the room. Joined briefly as a Malkavian. But kept complaining that cam games are so boring. Sabbat games are at least G. Fidelio. Multi-year veteran who bragged about his time in the Camarilla Club came in playing a Tremere who wanted nothing more than to whack everyone with his status dick. The scene opens with all of us in the Capitol building which apparently has been rented out for Elysium. Franklin D. Roosevelt is in the Speaker of the House seat and at his side is Hubert Hoover, in a dress. Everyone gathers, quieting down. Primogen are obviously seated up front. Roosevelt seems prepared to address the group when... Eleanor Roosevelt storms into the room and angrily marches up to Hubert Hoover, punching him through a wall proclaiming how dare you steal one of my dresses, the players mostly seem uninterested. Me. Click. Street. What are you doing me? I'm taking a picture with my cell phone and uploading it to Screcknet. Street. What how me? The book says it's like a messaging system. Like social media. So. I have the Screcknet app on my phone and I'm posting the picture to Screcknet. Street finds this hilarious. Everyone else seems uncaring. I am confused as I was pretty sure I was just following the book. The session continues as mostly social bits, an announcement that since Hoover has been punched through a wall he is no longer keeper of Elysium and that a new one will be selected within a month. Announcements of a possible Sabbath threat, 
and the harpy being missing. Through my Screcknet post, I get information on where the harpy is. The group goes to a warehouse, fights a bunch of sabot thugs and we rescue the harpy who is Teddy Roosevelt who gives us all a point of his status. Bully. And the session ends with us slinking off for the night. Now, the street informs us all that we have downtime actions. A set number and extra ones based on certain skills or certain backgrounds and we have to turn them in before the night's over. Given most players built combat monkeys most of them didn't have very many. Fidelio had a few more due to his backgrounds. He implied by being a Tremere he had a lot of Chantry duties as well in his downtimes. I had a ton of actions. So, I submitted the following list. Roughly, it's been some years. Spy on Fidelio and block any obviously antagonistic action towards another PC. Spy on Tom and block any obviously antagonistic action towards another PC. Spy on Sasuke and block any obviously antagonistic action towards another PC. Spy on Chet and block any obviously antagonistic actions towards another PC. Work at the morgue. Collect any obviously diseased blood and keep it in the donation freezer. Marked. For possible uses later. The next week, the street had printed our results of our downtime actions. I noticed some players looked a bit upset. Some glared at others around the room. After a couple of weeks of this repeating, the street informed me outside of game that players were hassling him about not letting them target other players in their downtimes, which he stated to them was not true and that downtimes can only be hindered either by securities put in place, outright failures or the actions of another player. Tom sadly quit after a few weeks, and Chet got to the point where he was visibly upset at game sessions. Out of game, Sasuke commented about how boring game was becoming and quit her character, eager to come in as something else to spice the game up. It was becoming clear that tensions were starting to boil, but I had no idea to what would be coming. Of course, looking back now, I realize that a few red flags had already well presented themselves at even this stage. Apologies for it being so long for clarification this is a list of books the street had me read before my first session of VTM. VTM Cornus Ferret a clan book. I had expressed interest in the clan, Giovanni clan book, I had also expressed interest in this clan, VTM, guide to the Camarilla VTM, guide to the Anarches. So like I hope you boys enjoyed this part 1, you're gonna find part 2 over on Thread Thrasher's channel, it'll be down below in the description and the comments and the cards, go ahead check that out, this gets really bad, this is one of the... It's one of the few stories that's actually really annoyed me recently. Like, you know, it hasn't been about the DM or anything. It's the other players. They are absolute scumbags, if I'm being honest with you. They're like, they, really are, they really are nasty bits of work. So you guys want to definitely check that shit out. So go ahead, click the links down below. Definitely catch part two because you're missing out big time if you don't.